Today I'm going to be looking at something of an acoustic finger style classic On the Sunny Side of the Ocean by John Fahey. Uh, I've looked at a couple of John Fahey tracks previously on this channel. He's long been one of my favourite acoustic guitar players and this track in particular I think is really special. Uh, I suppose this is my summer special for this year as well. It's got Sunny in the title so I think that qualifies as a, as a summer themed track but uh, anyway I'm going to begin by playing through the track for you. Usual caveats of course apply. I can't reproduce the magic of John Fay. He's got an amazing tone and touch that is just very hard to reproduce but I'm going to do my best and see what happens then I'll take you through exactly how to play the track. <laughs> So there we go, a little bit ragged in places, but I hope that was an acceptable rendition. At least you got the gist of the tune there. Now, this piece first appeared, I think, in 1965 on the album The Transfiguration of Blind Joe Death. And it was subsequently re-recorded at least once, if not more times. And there are plenty of live versions as well. It's one of those pieces that Fahey seems to play slightly differently every time. And this particular lesson is based on the original 65 recording but I think once you know it once you know the different elements to the piece you can play around with them improvise with them a little bit and make the piece your own. Let's get started then and I am going to be assuming just a little bit of finger style competence and knowledge on your part it's not a beginner's tune uh, neither is it terrifyingly difficult with practice but you will need to know some basic alternating thumb style patterns I have actually done a video on some beginner friendly finger style patterns which I'll put a link to on screen you might like to check that out before you get started on this one if you're not familiar with those very basics 
And first things first, the tuning. We're in open G tuning, which a uh, beautiful tuning sounds like that. Uh, the way, best, easiest way I think to get into open G tuning is you drop the two outside strings down to a D. You can use your open D string as a reference point, and then you need to drop the fifth string down to a G. Again, you can use the, the, the third string as the reference point there. So that gives you D, and then G, D, G, B, those strings are the same as standard tuning, and then we've got a D on top, which gives us a lovely open G chord. Now what I'm going to do is just take you through this tune section by section. There are quite a lot of different sections. I'm going to try and describe them in an adequate amount of detail. I'm not going to be describing every single note, but hopefully uh, you've got some close-ups of, of both hands here and you'll be able to figure out what's going on. I'm also going to do a detailed tab of this one, which is going to be available on my Patreon page for those of you who are interested. Now the introduction, this is letter A in my tab, is quite a simple series of descending chords. They're actually just one finger chord. So we're starting off with this shape. So it's just a fifth fret on the fifth string. And then we're just taking that bass note down to the fourth fret and then down to the second fret. And we've got the open second, third and fourth strings. And, and the pattern is something like this. So we've got an alternating thumb there. going between strings five and four and then we've got I'm using my first finger on the third string and my, my middle finger on the second string. And then we're just going down. arriving at open strings towards the end there. That's the basic pattern. There are variations uh, on that pattern. You don't have to stick to exactly what I'm playing or exactly what's in my tab, but that's, that's the basic idea for the introduction. Then we've just got some open string stuff before we go into what you could describe as the main theme. And that's the bit that goes like this. Ideas. So it's really based on two simple chord shapes. We've got this one and then we've got this one here. So that, that first chord shape got open fourth string and then two, one and open. And we, we set up this kind of pattern. So I'm starting with my thumb on the fourth string and I'm going over with my thumb to the third string, rolling up through that chord shape and then rolling back down again. And then we've got a hammer on from uh, open fourth string to the second fret. So the, the melody here is really in the bass. That's, that's what you want to bring out. And then we've got the open top string and the second string is in there as well. So As far as the, the picking hand goes with this one, it makes sense for me to have the, the thumb playing the third and fourth strings and I've got my first finger is playing all the notes on the second string, my middle finger is playing all the notes on the top string. I think that's how Faye does it. There might be some other ways you could do it, but that certainly flows nicely, I think, for this particular bit. Then we've just got a little linking passage, which is on like a, a C chord shape. It's not actually a C chord because we're in an alternate tuning, but that's the, the finger shape we've got here. So just, just setting up a simple pattern there. You've got the alternating thumb again. And then we've got the same chords as that main theme, but it becomes a bit more strummy. So we've got something like this. Up to you how you how you do this. I'm, I'm playing the bass notes with the thumb and then 
I'm sometimes strumming the, the chords with the thumb and sometimes just, just brushing with my index finger as well. You can get that sort of strummy effect like that too. Then we're into this idea. So this is quite straightforward. We've got this, this shape here, so four on the fourth string, three on the second string, and we're just setting up this arpeggio pattern. So it's in terms of the string numbers there, it's four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one. going up to the fifth fret on the fourth string. Next we've got this idea. So it's all based on a melody on the top string. And then we've got the open fifth string droning away and uh, I've actually changed the way I play this. I used to play this slightly differently but looking at the way Fahey does it he's using this basing the part on this kind of chord shape so we've got four three four on the top three strings and we're starting off by sliding from four to five on the top string and we've got the open second string in there then we're back to this shape and we've got four on the top string and three on the second string. A little bit hard to describe what's going on here so I'll just play it nice and slowly and you should be able to see and hear how it works. That kind of idea. So see how we're just sliding up and you've got the open second string then we're going back into this shape here and then just lifting up the third finger for that open string. Then we just got some connecting stuff just with some open strings and we're into the next little bit which goes like this. Just, uh, sets up quite a simple pattern, it's a simple chord shape which we're then just moving around. So that the chord shape is this, we've just got four on the fifth string and then four on the fourth string and four on the third string as well. Kind of show. It's a little bit of a squeeze for all of the fingers to, to be in there at the same fret. So I'm actually fingering that second finger first and then third finger. And then we're moving that down. Getting some lovely dissonant chords in there as well. And then moving it down and then back up. And the pattern that Fahey is, is setting up is this. So we're playing with the thumb, it's kind of striking the, the fifth string, maybe a bit of the fourth string as well. And then we've got the, the top two strings, the strings one and then two. So it's kind of five, one, two, five, one, two, five, one is the basic idea. Moving down. Down again. up to the fourth fret then we're back into the the part that we've had before this bit the next section I'm calling this letter D in my tab it goes like this so it's based on this shape here so we've got four three and then five with an open fourth string. Setting up that arpeggio pattern is similar to the, the main theme that we had earlier. And then we're moving that shape down. Kind of on, on an off beat there, so on the and of four. We've got the open top string in there as well. Coming to open strings, uh, 
lovely melody here. It's just kind of hammer on at the first fret on the second string. And then a, a lovely dissonant sound here as well. So first fret on the third string. And that's all with a, a droning fifth string in there. So. Next section goes like this. So we've really got a melody in the bass here. And on top we've got the first fret on the second string, third fret on the top string. And, and this is the pattern. My thumb is playing that melody and then I've got my middle finger and first finger playing those higher notes. There's a little hammer on in there as well. And then we have this. So it's just open strings. This kind of idea, so it's fifth string, uh, third and second strings, and then just hammering down with my first finger there. Just some, some strumming there at the end of the phrase, and then things start repeating. We've got some more of this. And then we've got some more of this. Uh, before we return to the main theme, and then we've got an outro which is uh, almost identical to the to the intro. It's more of these arpeggios, descending bass line. with the open fifth and third strings there. And that's really about it. Now, as far as the structure goes, it is a little bit hard to play it exactly as Fahey does it. I've written it out in my tab exactly as he plays it, but uh, I don't think my performance at the start was exactly what he did there. It's kind of a flexible arrangement, I think. If you learn these, these parts one at a time, you can almost just treat each of these sections as its own kind of musical thing, as a little exercise. Then you can piece them together. Um, you know, I can't really detect much of a pattern in terms of which bit goes where and how many repeats there are on each of these sections. So you can kind of be a little bit flexible with that. And uh, to some extent, you can do it your own way. You know, I know that uh, I watched loads of live John Fahey videos when I was preparing for this, and each one of those was slightly different in terms of the arrangement. The gear that I'm using today, guitar, is a Martin 0015M. And I'm using a thumb pick today. I think the thumb pick works well for John Fahey stuff. He famously used metal thumb and finger picks and got quite a strident attacking tone. So I felt that I needed uh, that attack on, on the bass notes. This is just a plastic thumb pick. It doesn't sound exactly like Fahey's tone, but I think it works well. And um, you know, whether you use a thumb pick or not, it's just a question of what kind of tone you're after. Often with finger style stuff, I'm not using a thumb pick, and that just means you've got a slightly warmer, less defined sound in the bass, which can work well for certain things. So uh, that, that's it as far as the gear goes. Um, I'm just recording the guitar today with my Roya ribbon microphone. It's an R121. Usually that just sits up on my guitar cab to record uh, electric guitars, but it seems to work pretty well for acoustic guitars too. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's my rig for today. That's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you would like tab, and I think with a piece like this that's quite complex, lots of different sections and elements, tab can be quite a useful thing just to follow along with that. Uh, you can get that on my Patreon page, pay what you like, get access to that, and my whole archive of other wonderful tabs. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.